I really just wanted to take some time after um, I got to speak on Tuesday morning. Um, I walked out and I felt like um, I really didn't take the opportunity to really talk about the why when it comes to deeper learning, how it relates to the backpack, how I kind of got to where my beliefs are on this journey, and to share that with you a little bit. Um, and so I asked if I could close out on the last day with about 10 minutes, and Alan has threatened me that all I have is 10 minutes. Um, but I'm hard to stop once I get going, so, um, but I'll do my best. But I really wanted to talk about this journey because I think it is so important. And, you know, I miss a lot having professional development with teachers. I miss that a lot. And whether it be at faculty meetings or gold days, um, having that opportunity to lead that uh, professional development and really give the why, the North Star on what we're doing. And unfortunately, in my position now, I don't get a lot of opportunity to do that um, just because of the size of our district. So when am I ever going to get to have 7,000 teachers come together? So we try to communicate the best we can through our leaders, our school leaders. But as we all know, it's like that old telephone game that sometimes by the time it gets from um, wherever we're talking, uh, especially the, you know, the things that I believe, that you might not hear the same message. And I think this was a great opportunity to share that a little bit. So if you will, I'd like to go back on uh, my journey through this a little bit. And I go back and I start at um, when I was an assistant principal at Wagner and then first as a principal at Jefferson Town High School. And I've been in classrooms all across the country. Um, and when I'm talking high schools especially, and the good part about my job is I've had the opportunity now to get into elementary, middle, and high. But most of my career was focused on high. And one of the common things and the schools are different all across the country. But the common thing I noticed in every school I went to, no matter what part of the country, no matter what type of school, socioeconomic level, no matter what type of class, all kids had the same look on their face when they sat in class the majority of the time. And it was really that checked out, I don't care what's going on in here look. And some kids are a lot more compliant than others because they either have to be for college transcripts or homework or grades or whatever it might, or home, whatever it might be. But they still had the look on their face where they just weren't inspired by their learning. And I continued to think something is wrong here. And then when you look at the research and you really dig into the research around student engagement and belonging, we see that starting at the third grade, the third grade is where student engagement and belonging peaks at its highest point in schooling across America and declines from third grade all the way through 12th grade. And we have to ask why, does it have to be this way? Now I have a 14 year old daughter, so I know kids at 14 year olds, you middle school uh, folks out there, God bless you. Um, I have one, I know you have 150 a day, um, but I understand as kids move through adolescence and into their teenage years, it becomes more challenging to inspire and engage them. But we have to ask what we're doing nationally in education. And all we ever hear is, well, we're preparing them for college by getting them to do this compliant work, this curriculum that was designed 100 years ago and we're getting them prepared for college. And I would contend, are we preparing them for college? Or maybe college needs to change too. Maybe college and post-secondary needs to change too. Because all we are doing when we do compliant work and activities for kids day after day, year after year, is drive the passion for learning out of them. So as the principal at J-Town High School, and I went into a chemistry class one day. And at J-Town High School, we have this um, welding program. And the welding kids are awesome at J-Town. They're a little bit different, but they're awesome kids. And sometimes they just cut class, the rest of their classes, because they wanted to go down and see Mr. Burke in the welding lab. And so we would have to go get them out of welding. Come on, you got to get back up to chemistry class where you're supposed to be. But I just want to be in welding. And so we had this kid. Um, he was out from Fisherville, and he had the fish hook on his hat, and all he wanted to do was weld. 
And I was up in the chemistry class one day and they were talking about the periodic table and an element on the periodic table. And the kid just, he was refused to participate and be engaged. And it just so happened two hours later, it was unbelievable. I go into the welding shop, the lab, the kid has his helmet on and Mr. Burke is talking about the exact same element. And there is the kid engaged, passionate about what's going on. And I go over to him and I say, it's the same element you were talking about two hours ago. And he said, yeah, but I get to do something with it here. It's just not on a piece of paper. And I walked out of there thinking, we're doing something wrong here. And so we really tried to find ways to get, how can we link the two together? And the great chemistry teacher at J-Town High School said, how about if I take my class from this academy down to the welding shop and do chemistry. Would it be okay if we do chemistry class down? I said, heck yeah. I said, let them wear their masks for all I care. They can put their masks down as long as they're learning chemistry. Then I went to Doss High School because I really wanted to take a school-wide wall-to-wall approach to student engagement. What if we really engage kids? And so over the course of two years, we worked on this. How can we implement project-based learning? But I mean, an intense laser-like focus on getting kids engaged, especially those from poverty, special education, English language learners, but an intense focus on that. And we worked it, and in that year we did it, we started seeing some amazing results. And I'm not just talking about test scores, forget test scores. I'm talking about kids coming to school more, kids behaving better in the classroom, kids being a sense of belonging at the school because we had this, let's get them engaged. But at the end of that year, I still felt like, you know, what we were doing was we were teaching normal, and then we would turn our attention every so often to this project-based learning. And it was like, okay, let's stop and do this. And I couldn't fit, because I wanted it every day, all the time, linked to the standards, but all day, every day, where kids are inspired by what they're doing. And I use this word a lot, authentic learning. Authentic learning is not bubbling in multiple choice answers. And yes, we've got to do that. It's a part of balanced assessment and approach. But I really felt like we've got to do it where it's ingrained in the work, everyday work, and it's happening all the time if it's truly going to make a difference. And I express that. To Tim Godby at KDE, we were sitting down talking and he told me, I got someone you need to meet. She was the former superintendent at Danville. She works at UK now. She's great at this stuff. So Carmen Coleman was brought to DOS and we sat down and talked and I said, we gotta go deeper. We gotta figure out a way to get there. Mostly for every kid all the time. And my big problem was we had some kids getting this deep learning experience. Some kids in our district are doing robotics. Some kids are doing Project Lead the Way and art and music and others aren't. I said, how, and we gotta get away from, I wanna walk into an ECE resource room and see no compliant activity. I wanna see kids engaged. So we talked about it. And come to pass a couple weeks later, I got named to this crazy position. And shortly after that, I was looking for a chief academic officer and I sat down with Dr. Coleman, ironically, during this um, event symposium two years later, or two years ago, and we went over to Cardinal Cafe and talked about it. And what I said is we've got to find a way to get every student in JCPS getting these activities, these experiences, this deep, rich learning experience every day. Not let's stop now and do something, then we go back to the way it always is. And so she jumped on board and in the, that first year, we said, how we, what's a vehicle? What's a way we can do this? And Carmen always talks, she always talked about when a kid graduates and walks across the stage, what do we want in their backpack? And we were talking yesterday, I said, how'd we come up with that? And, and really we, we started just kind of laughing about it. And so it took us four or five months to develop this backpack. And we started talking, should we do this? Just let's just do this for a pilot few schools and get it right. And maybe five years from now, everyone will do it. And then we said, no, we're not doing that. This has to be for every kid. That's the problem in education. Let's do five schools and then five schools and then five schools. And then somewhere down the line, 20 years from now, maybe we'll hit everybody. And by that time we're gone. 
and someone else has moved on to something else. And every kid deserves this, every kid. And so we really wanted every kid to have it in every school. And we implemented this. And I did, we didn't know if it was, how it was gonna go and we've had struggles along the way. But now as we look at it, we have almost a million artifacts in backpacks. We have 21, nearly 21,000 kids stood up and did defenses of their learning with authentic learning experiences in one year across 156 schools and nearly 100,000 students. And so it's an incredible start and I appreciate all of your work on this, I really do. It's hard work and we are not there. We have just put this little tree in the ground and we're watering these roots, hoping that they get deeper. But what we really want, and I wanna be clear on this before I wrap up, our goal with the backpack is not to get kids to do extra stuff not to have kids do the work, but to change the experiences that kids have in their classroom on a daily basis. So that teachers, when they plan, when they develop activities in the class, it becomes a natural thing that happens where we are producing artifacts because of the experiences in the class. We're not saying what artifacts can we make, what experiences can our teachers and schools um, plan and implement in the classroom that will just lead to artifacts that we can put in the backpack. And I believe that is the heart of deeper learning. That's what we want you to do. So I want you to think about this as you move forward and plan how can we do this. Think about how you get together with a PLC. And instead of saying, Okay, we've got to do something for the backpack because the principal sent out an email and we've got to get some stuff in the backpack. That is not our goal in this at any time. That is not what we want. What we want is you saying in your PLC, what are we teaching? What standards are we teaching right now? And how are we gonna teach it? How can we support each other? And most importantly, what type of activities Lesson planning, can we do that will lead to deeper learning experiences in the classroom where kids become engaged during this unit? And it might be an assessment. Maybe it's a speech. Maybe they're making a video. Maybe they're writing a play. There's all kinds of things that kids can be doing. It can be an assessment of the learning. It can be assessment for learning but the artifacts just become natural part of learning progression. So we can say a test is an artifact, but that's not what we're looking for. We are looking for authentic experiences that kids just do it. And imagine that you're doing this all the time in your PLCs. Kids are having these experiences all the time, things that inspire and engage them that make them wanna do this. They put it in their, or you give them feedback, multiple loops where they improve, and it just automatically goes into their backpack without a second thought. And then the challenge becomes at defense time, what do I pick? Not do I have enough in there, it's I got so much in there, what am I going to pick to show these great learning experiences that I have? That's our goal, that's what we are looking for, engage and inspire your students. Light that fire. It's what you want for your own children. It is what I want for my daughter. I do not want her coming home doing packets of homework. I want her coming home working on a project on something that is going to inspire her that might take time, two weeks to do, but in the end, it's going to be a meaningful experience. And so I would say this, this final thought, theory of action. If we better engage our students, our students will come to school more often. I believe that, I know that. If we better engage our students, our students will behave better in schools. I know it, I believe it, it will happen. Does that mean behavior will be perfect? Absolutely not, we'll still have problems. But I know when kids are inspired and engaged, they will uh, behave better, 
and they will be more engaged in school because their learning is meaningful. If we better engage our students, we will improve student achievement. I know it and I believe it. Now imagine that, kids come to school more often, kids behave better, kids learn more. What more could we ask? That's what we're looking for and that's what we need. As you move into next year, think about how you can make those experiences more authentic, where the backpack is not something additional, it is just a part of the normal process. Thank you for your work, have a great summer.